emerging from captivity after almost one and a half years locked away from the world. But these men were willing captives, testing the effects on humans of a return flight to Mars. The crew of one Chinese, one Italian, one Frenchman and three Russians had been locked up inside this capsule since June last year. Since then, they'd stayed firmly rooted to Earth in a car park outside a Russian space center. The aim of the experiment was to see how they'd cope with such a long period of confinement. So one of our worries was actually that this group would grow bored with their company, so, so that there would be more friction uh, and conflicts than we actually saw. The highlight of the journey was a simulated Mars landing, which saw three crew members don spacesuits to walk in a sandpit, collecting samples as if they're on the red planet. But there were also moments of tedium and stress. And today we're out of light. Despite these challenges, the experiment's been judged a success. Yes, man is able physiologically and psychologically uh, to endure the confinement of a mission to Mars. So, let's go there. Mars holds a long-standing fascination for humans, with recent images suggesting signs of water, fueling hopes it could sustain life. But despite this interest and the Mars 500 experiment, a real trip to the Red Planet is still a long way off. People have been talking about going to Mars for decades, um, going right back to the Apollo moon landings and even before that. Um, I think realistically it's going to be another few decades before we actually do send people out there. The experiment's been so realistic that these volunteers feel they've already been to Mars. They'll face a week of medical and psychological tests before being allowed home. The challenge now is to turn their dream of space travel into a reality.